Welcome to another JS Drop from this time. In this week's drop, Annie Sullivan, software engineer on Google's Chrome Web Platform team, is digging into runtime performance in the Chrome DevTools performance panel. Want to learn how to debug slow interactions, but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Annie. I work on the Chrome Web Platform team at Google and we want to help web developers understand and improve the performance of their sites. A lot of the performance tools that people use today are focused on the initial page load time. But did you know that 90% of the time users spend on the average web page is after it is loaded? Today, I want to talk about using the performance panel in Chrome DevTools to dig into how your site is performing after it loads. We're going to focus on how your page responds to user interactions. I think the biggest thing that stops people from digging into the performance panel is how complicated it looks. There are so many things going on, it's a bit overwhelming. So today, I want to start really simple, just poking at some small toy apps so we can learn about how to use the performance panel. After you get used to it on a simple app, I think it'll be a lot easier to use on your own site. So to get started, let's look at a really simple app I made with my kids. They wanted to make a game, so we started with a game that's super easy to program, a very basic cookie clicker. You click the cookie and the score goes up. Let's take a look at how it works. We'll inspect the cookie, and we can see at the bottom of the page there's a script tag uh, that puts an event listener on the, uh, the cookie for click, and it calls increase score on click. So if we go into the sources, we can see increase score on click, uh, updates the score, and then calls this function to update the UI, which just changes uh, the score elements text content to the current score. Pretty simple. I've also added a uh, performance measure around the timings of these, so you can get a better feel for uh, where they show up in the performance panel. So let's look at the site in the performance panel. We click on performance and then click record. And we click on the cookie and the score goes up. Awesome. Sometimes it can take a while to process, uh, but now uh, we have a recording up. So let's take a look at it. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is this panel just got like a lot more complicated, but we'll walk through it top to bottom to get oriented. Like many profiling tools, it has its information organized into a series of tracks. So at the top here, we've got uh, the time track. And you can see uh, it's just measuring from zero to about 4.5 seconds in milliseconds. How long did I have the, the recording running? And you can see here, we can actually uh, scroll around the recording and align it to this timing. You also notice that the beginning of the timeline is by default uh, emitted. Uh, sometimes the performance, the profiler startup can be a little slow, so uh, they're kind of hiding any slowdowns from that. Just below the timeline is a chart of CPU activity. You can actually drag around the CPU bumps to zoom in on one. So we'll look more in depth at those types of things uh, in a bit. Below the CPU is there's like a, a network panel. Nothing's showing up on my page for network because this cookie clicker is 100% offline. Below that are the screenshots of the page over time. So if I look at these screenshots, I can see uh, the score is going up because it, as time increases, I kept clicking and increasing the score. Uh, next is the frames track. The frames track only shows the actual frames that were presented. So basically anytime the screen changed. So here you're just seeing the score going up. You're not seeing intermediary frames. I'm going to collapse the frames to save space. All right. Below the frames track is the timings track. So here are where my user marks and measures are. Uh, they're really hard to see. But what we can do is go back into the sources panel and we can just copy one of them. So run increase score on click. I'll copy that and I'll go to the performance tab. I'll click control F or command F on Mac, paste it in. And now I can see where all of my timings are 
in the panel and kind of how they relate to the other tracks. So that can be a really good trick for un making sure that you know where you're profiling when you're on this screen. The next track is the interactions track. You can see interactions in orange and yellow showing up uh, at the same time as we click. Uh, and so because they're at the same time as we click, they're uh, one, one like up and down with our measures. Below that is the main thread. You're probably gonna be spending most of your time digging into what's happening on the main thread. Browsers need to run all your event handlers along with layout and paint and most of the other JavaScript on the main thread. And most of the runtime performance issues you see happen because the main thread gets too busy with all of that stuff. Below that are the, the GPU, the compositor, and other threads. You can see that things happen on multiple threads at once, but as you're getting started, it's fine to just focus on the main thread. OK, so now we know the basics of what the tracks are. Now let's look at our application performance. We click the co cookie, and the score was updated. It felt pretty fast, but how fast exactly? To dig into this, we want to start on the interactions track. We can click on each interaction. And we get some information here. It's a pointer up interaction, and its total time was 40 milliseconds. And here we have a click interaction at the same time. The total time is 40 milliseconds. The reason we have both interactions showing up is because when you lift your mouse button, you actually do get a pointer up and a click, and they, they do overlap uh, the, the start of the interaction and the end. Uh, that's what is the start of the interaction and the end? What is 40 milliseconds measuring? I think is a good question uh, based on that, right? So you lift your mouse button up, and the, the time when the mouse registered that the button is being lifted up until the next frame was painted on the screen is the timing of this interaction. So now if we want to debug the interaction, we need to zoom in on it. Uh, so that is where the performance panel can get a bit intimidating. There is a couple ways to, uh, to zoom it. The first one is like an old school video game. You can go on your keyboard and press WASD. Uh, w zooms in, S zooms out. A goes to the, the left and D goes to the right. Uh, if you play old school video games with the keyboard uh, navigation, that's really intuitive. Uh, but for some people, it's a little bit weird and confusing. So there's a couple other ways that we can look at this. We can drag uh, along the timeline to highlight this, or we can use the mouse wheel. We can click on this and then just use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in. So that's what I'm going to do here. So now we have uh, an event, an interaction, and it was 40 milliseconds. And I think the first thing you might notice is that our actual code is this like teeny tiny 0.12 milliseconds. So what's actually happening here? Uh, there's a couple of things going on, but I'll talk about the big one uh, for the first interaction. You're going to see some profiling overhead uh, from starting the profiler up. So Let's not look at the first interaction. Let's look at the rest of them. I'll zoom out and then click a different interaction and zoom in. And then when we zoom in on this interaction, I think the first thing that stands out now is all of the blank space. What's actually happening here? So on the left, we have this big gap. It actually takes some small amount of time Remember, this whole thing is eight milliseconds. So this is like one or two milliseconds here. Uh, I lift my finger up on the mouse. The mouse tells the operating system. The operating system tells the browser. And the browser tells the appropriate renderer. And that can take uh, a measurable amount of time, not usually very much. And then on the right here, uh, as, as you remember, most har hardware paints at about, uh, uh, refreshes at about 60 frames per second. So uh, the fastest we can go is about 16 milliseconds until that uh, next paint. So we do have some time here waiting uh, for the VSync or the next frame. So what's actually happening when the main thread is busy? We can scroll and zoom in. And the first thing we can see is we have our, our performance marks for run increase score on click and run update score UI. And these correspond, here's the click event. And then underneath here is a CPU sample. So this, the sample profiling said, hey, we're taking a lot of time and increased score on click. 
and we're taking slightly less time in update score UI. These aren't going to be exactly one to one. Uh, number one, like this mark starts inside the function and ends inside the function. And also this is sampled. So it's not like going to be exactly perfect, but it will be good enough to basically see like, where is the time going? Then uh, we do have other stuff that happens besides our function call that ran. On the left here, uh, the browser did a prepaint and had to do a hit test. A hit test is uh, when you click, like, where did you click? So it needs to do a hit test to find that out. And then uh, there's a lot of, like, recalculate style, layout, prepaint, paint, and uh, let me scroll over here, layerize, commit. This is all of the things that the browser needs to do to update the UI when because we changed this score here. We, we changed an element, so it needs to do all those things to update. And then you can see it rasterizes, it sends the frame to the GPU, and then uh, we have to wait for the vSync. And our, that's our full eight milliseconds uh, from end to end. All right, so our page is pretty fast, and uh, we've got the basics down of the of the performance panel. One thing I think is really important to keep in mind when you're using the performance panel is you're probably like me. I have a nice, fast MacBook Pro. The first question you should be asking a lot of uh, people that are using websites are on slow Android phones. They're on clunky old netbooks. Is this going to work for them? And that's the first setting that we want to look into in the performance panel. So there's a settings button here on the right. I know it's really confusing. There's also a settings button at the top, but use the, the one on the right inside the performance pane. And then right now it says CPU no throttling. Uh, we can throttle the CPU to simulate uh, a, a phone or a slow netbook a little bit more. Another thing that you can do if you're if you're able to is actually go buy a small a slow phone and you can plug it right into to your computer and uh, trace it directly from DevTools. Uh, but since uh, everyone can look at this, uh, I'm going to do it this way for now. So we have CPU six x slowdown and let's record and try again. So we do see that this first interaction with the big profiling overhead is still slow. But even on really slowed down hardware, we're still seeing uh, very fast interactions. So this page, as you'd expect, you know, it has like two lines of JavaScript. Uh, it updates one element. It's pretty fast. So great. Uh, but my kids, uh, they just were getting started. The cool thing about a cookie clicker is that you can do a lot of different things with them. So they decided uh, to upgrade. Uh, this is Cookie Clicker version three. Um, and what it does is two things. First, when you click, click the cookie, it changes color, which is pretty cool. And they gave us an upgrade. Uh, now your score increases by a random amount, but they wanted it to be like really random. So what they did, was they uh, ran the random number generator one million times. Let's profile this and see what it looks like. Uh, but first, before we profile, I wanted to point out that um, our script now uh, has a pointer down handler to change the cookie color and a click handler to change the score. And you can actually kind of see the click handler is really slow. The pointer down handler updates the cookie color, and then the score gets updated. So we actually have this, like, since this is on the mouse down, and this is on the mouse up, we kind of have this awkward shift happening. So let's go to the performance panel and figure out what's happening. All right. Now we can see uh, a couple things, right? Like uh, run, increase score, more random. I also have a, uh, a performance mark on this and it's really slow. It's like almost 700 milliseconds. Uh, if you want to understand like how long it should take, users expect kind of an immediate visual update in about 100 milliseconds. So that, that's really long. And we also see here uh, the pointer down 
taking 32 milliseconds. So let's zoom in, uh, start to finish. The pointer down event happened. And I have this teensy tiny 12 microsecond run cookie change color. And you can see, again, we did a hick test and a prepaint. And in uh, about 0.48 milliseconds or, or less, uh, the pointer down event hand happened. It called my change cookie color. And that all went really fast. Then it did a recalculate style on a prepaint. Uh, it committed, went onto the GPU, and it still had to wait for the, the next vSync for the next frame at 60 hertz. But then, so that's why we had uh, up here, you can kind of see the score, the cookie updates, and then the score updates later. That's why. So here is a problem. Our increased score, more random function is really slow. Now, this is what you're going to see when you actually have a performance problem. Uh, I think this is one thing to really keep in mind when you're looking at the interactions panel and you're seeing like a lot of blank stuff. You actually won't be seeing so much blank stuff if you're having a real performance problem. Here we have a click handler and it's calling our function and our function is running for like 700 milliseconds. So it's pretty obvious here that if we don't want to have this like slow update, we need to figure out how to speed up our random number function. And I think it, it's also pretty obvious that we could just call it once that the million times uh, isn't really helping anything. So that's the basics of how to use the Chrome performance panel. Uh, I really hope you'll try it out and let me know if you have any issues. Thanks so much.